Okay. Mm. Spotlight old. Hi everyone, I'm just typing in um, a comment just to pin it so anyone who joins later on knows what we're speaking about. So we're speaking uh, to Camilla today who is one of the judges and also the senior art director at Wonderman Thompson. Um, she's a judge for the Spotlight Awards as well, so um, we're going to be having a chat with her, what she looks for um, in the industry. Okay, and pin comment. Okay, and we're going to start now. Okay. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for the invitation. So nice talking to you. Yeah, it's great to talk to you too. I've been looking forward to this one. Um, uh, so, how you're in Brazil at the moment? Yeah, so yeah, my, I'm at São Paulo. Okay. I've lived, I've lived here for almost twenty years now. Okay, okay. And so, how long have um you been working in art direction? Um, wow. I think I've been working since I was twenty. I've been working for seventeen years. 17 Sorry. Years. <laughs> Sorry. 17 years. 17 uh, years. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and so are you, have you recently become the senior art director at Wonderman Thompson? Because 17 years is uh, like quite, you know, while so you're obviously very knowledgeable in your field, you've had a lot of experience. So could you tell us a little bit more about that as well? Yeah, sure. I started my career in 2008. I began at FCB Brazil. I was a creative assistant there. And two years later, I became my director. Mm -hmm. I worked for eight years at FCB. It was a great time. I learned a lot. I had a lot of great experiences. I had uh, some opportunities of working abroad because FCB has a very active network. Mm -hmm. So we, we went and did some international projects and there I created campaigns that made me really proud for Nivea, okay. and, uh, Nestle, Sky, Oreo, okay. among other brands and also local brands. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. And then in 2000, uh, 2016, I joined TBWA here in Brazil and started working with a whole different set of clients, including Nissan and PepsiCo, Gatorade, Netflix. Mm -hmm. And I spent three years there and th I have some great memories. During that time, I also had the experience of traveling abroad to work for TBWA International. And I had my baby Matias during that time. Oh, so yeah, he's two years old now. Oh, so a lot of great memories. Yes, yes. Oh, it's wonderful. So you're, you've always been busy. You've always been active and being involved in what sounds like a variety, a huge amount of really interesting campaigns. You said that yeah. you had, yeah. You said that you were able to work with um, or do some really interesting and memorable campaigns for like Nivea and Oreo. So can you tell us one that's particularly memorable to you and why? Um, yes, there was uh, Nivea here in Brazil. They built this platform around music, around Brazilian music. Mm -hmm. And for their first campaign, when we decided to launch that platform, um, I participated in that. 
So it was a tribute to Elise, Re Elise Regina, which is a very, very um, a beloved singer mm -hmm. uh, from our history. And it, at that time, we were... We were celebrating 30 years that she had passed away. We were mm -hmm. not celebrating, but it was her anniversary in some sort yeah. of way. And yeah. we also had that uh, the, the opportunity that her daughter, um, Maria Rita, is also a singer. And she never had sung her mother's songs before. Mm -hmm. And she was going to, to open... A, set, a tour of concerts singing her mom songs and Nivia was the sponsor was the, the brand behind all that so yeah. it was very emotional and, yeah. and it was a great campaign to be on it was, okay. we were like having chills all the time it was very <laughs> emotional very emotional, very memorable it gets you right there no? right? It, something you'll always remember Yes, and recently I joined Wonderman Thompson, and now I also work with a very beloved um, beauty brand, which is Avon, and mm -hmm. Avon is huge here in Brazil, and it's a brand that I've always admired because they have, for a while now, they have had their mind set on bringing diversity and bringing all sorts of beauty, and that is so important here in Brazil, yes. and so I'm... I couldn't have, I couldn't be in a better place to be living these crazy moments with lockdown and all, because yes. we have a very tight team at Wonderman Thompson. We are very united, so I couldn't, couldn't have wished for a better, better team to be in during yeah. these crazy times. Yeah, very crazy times, very crazy times. But it's great to hear that you're working on something that's so current and trying to bring in more diversity and really um opening up how people view um beauty and beauty campaigns um i want to get back onto that later on sure. so i've also read that um you uh also are have some personal projects of your own because uh this is to do with gender equality and gender bias which is a very relevant topic in our culture at the moment and yeah had some personal projects where you're trying to bring a stronger awareness about it. Um, yes. Yeah. So tell us a little more about some of the projects you've uh, done and uh, what they've involved. Sure. I'm very passionate about my personal projects. Um, I have two projects that approach gender equality, our search for gender equality. One of them mm -hmm. is called Port Tips. And it's a project I started from my own experience because during my career, I missed having the opportunity of talking to more senior creative women. Mm -hmm. And as it was as simple as that, that there, were, there weren't that many. So I had very few opportunities of having mentors that yeah. way. So at this point in my career, I'm, I have this commitment to always make time and see other girls' portfolios and interview and talk and encourage them. And I just realized that uh, in many cases, there are many tips that can be useful for different girls. So I just gathered all these tips, all this advice in a place that they could be easily accessed. Access. Yeah. So I created an Instagram profile that's called Port Tips with a double, with an underscore in the end. Mm -hmm. And there I've written the text with what I would like to have heard during my time, during, during my experience, which is encouraging advice and friendly tips, something that can make a difference for these girls to put up a strong portfolio, to seize the opportunities that come their way, to yeah. know how to present them, themselves in an interview, all sorts of useful advice. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's and, like, it's like paving the way for a future generation of stronger female uh, figures in this industry. And you yeah. want to make sure that they have a clear path and that they're given the right information, something you wish you had got when you were starting up. Yeah, and also that they, it's a place for them to uh, be, to get this awareness of incredible opportunities that are happening. We have platforms that are showcasing female talent 
here in Brazil, like more girls or international, like invisible creatives. And in many times, these girls, they don't have access to that information. They just mm -hmm. don't know where to begin to be seen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. free courses, job openings, wow. all that sort of opportunity. I'm always publishing yes. them there. Yeah. And have you have you seen like a difference in you know the like the the young girls and the women who take part in yeah. finding this information? Yeah, I think that the younger generations they are so like I just don't know just tuned to the right frequency. It's so much easier because yeah. they are fighters. Not that yeah. we weren't we we were afraid of not being polite enough. You know, yeah, just. And hiding behind the odds, we we weren't just as brave, I think, as um, as honest about the difficulties and saying it out loud. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very happy every time I get in contact with the younger girls. Yeah, no, it's great because it's showing them that I mean, I mean, even though yeah, the younger generation are very brave and they're fighters, it's also very nice to be encouraged by other generations and by the community around us to say, you know, we can create a change and we can, you know, give more access and make and create opportunities for those who probably in the before would have thought it was maybe impossible. Yeah. You know? And I think that they are very ready to, um, to seize these opportunities and also say it out loud when they are being biased um, I think that's something great. I'm I'm very happy. I'm I'm happier. To, I'm happy to see that we are in a bigger number now in the creative yeah. scenes, and that it took long enough, but the industry woke up to to that fact that they were just losing money about having lack of diversity in the in the teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Losing money, but losing just like creative minds, losing yeah. all the potential. Yeah, and with your fountain of experience of knowledge as well it's probably it's priceless to some people who just want to find a way in and it's great that you've just like opened the door and said here you go you know there are ways yes and I think that um, recently I've been also publishing advice from other creative colleagues other women in our teams women I have worked with women I've I've gotten to know because we have friends in common and I think we're beginning to build this strong network. Yeah. You know, matching younger women with those that can mentor them. And that's something I'm very happy to be part of. Yes. Yeah. No, that's great because when you see others around you also growing and being more connected, it does give a light to a, a brighter and stronger future in a sense without trying to sound cliched, but it does yeah. give you some hope in a sense. Yeah, sure. It sure does. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And so you are actually um, going to be a beauty judge for this, this year's Spotlight Awards. So what was it that made you uh, accept our invitation at Production Paradise to be a judge this year? Well, I, I just felt very honored. I felt very happy with the invitation. I think that as, as an art director, Director, of course, I'm a huge fan of photography. I've always been. I love um, beautiful film scenes, every, every ni nicely done post-production. I admire every project that uh, in its visuals, they show this carefully executed craft. I think that I never thought of the art as something that could come separate from the concept. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I'm a very visual person, I, and I believe um, the majority of people are. And that emotion that you want provoke, to provoke in your audi audience, that will come first from what people see. Mm -hmm. So when you portray like a family scene, you want it to be warm, you want it to be sweet. And that's the first thing that people will feel when they mm -hmm. look at it, or if you want to show an athlete at all his fierceness and his strength you will use a lot of contrast and maybe black and white and yeah. that visual will also provoke something will provoke that admiration yeah people will get that strength first from the visual and then from the concept 
the whole concept. So I've always thought of that that craft, that carefully executed um, art visuals as something that couldn't in any way come separate from the creative thinking. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to be to be a judge in the Spotlight yeah. Awards. And we're very happy to have you. It's going to be great. Thank um, you. And so we are having, we have submissions coming in now, lots of submissions. And so it's very exciting to see uh, what people are um, giving into the Spotlight Awards. But as a judge, what, uh, and obviously not only as a judge, but someone who has, you know, a pool of experience, what sorts of things are you looking to see in this competition? Um... I think that I'm looking forward to being inspired. I don't know, to being a little shaken, to, to see stuff yeah. I wouldn't expect. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that something I love in every, in every uh, aspect of art is authenticity. I really mm -hmm. want to look at something and feel that the work of the artist behind that piece. So... I think that since I'll be judging the beauty category, I hope I can see some new insights mm -hmm. in the beauty industry. I think that we've been through a lot of change and that's something very good. You mm. know, s seeing different body types, different races, mm. different people, accepting that beauty yeah. can be something more true, more real and... Yeah. So that's like bringing that diversity that you were you mentioned before bringing diversity bringing uh different cultures and not being um afraid to break the boundaries in a sense of what has been constructed as beauty yes exactly seeing that spontaneity that 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 that, that art can be something beauty can some can be something spontaneous Yes. Um, I think we're moving forward. We're, we're, we're leaving behind all that fashion industry setting that is a lot of sexy looks and serious faces. Yeah. And we are bringing something much more, much richer that is, I don't know, people just lose smiling, new sorts of makeup, new sorts yeah. of poses and models. I'm looking forward to see a whole bunch of innovative stuff. Yeah. But it can also like be tied into, you know, what you were saying about um, bringing the emotion into a campaign, not just something that is very classic and predictable, but making someone feel or creating a connection. Yes. Them. Yes. I think that um, every brand has has like embracing the opportunity to send good messages to their audience, to the world. Mm -hmm. And I think they should. And that's something that comes to photography, that comes to art, that comes to the films we are creating, yeah. the stories we're trying to, trying to tell. That's very important to have that, yeah. to have some good message. We were, we are all responsible for the transformation. We are all responsible okay. for the good changes. Yeah, precisely. And that can also be done through beauty photography because beauty is quite a, a controversial topic, I think, for many. And so to be able to use the changes that we are witnessing and experiencing now and create a beautiful piece that people can really relate to, I think, you know, it will be like a huge achievement and it'll be great to see more work like that. Yes, that's what I'm hoping for. I think that the beauty industry has been like stuck on a pattern for too long. Mm -hmm. And we need to to break it. We need the, we really need to break it yes. to bring diversity, to let people see that beautiful has so many meanings. It's so yeah. it's such a a broad um word. It it has so much meaning, so mm -hmm. much more than what we, we have seen so far. Yes, exactly, exactly. Oh, that's really, so it's really exciting. It's really great that, you know, there is someone like you who's also going to be one of our judges and hopefully, like, encouraging people to be more daring. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes people are just afraid to do what hasn't been done yet. Okay. But they, they really should. 
Yeah. Because yeah. that's how you find your inner voice. That's how you make authentic work. Precisely. Being there and being so. So that leads me on to my next question, which is, um, so what kind of qualities, like both personal and professional, do you look for in photographers? Mm. I think that um, during my career, I had the pleasure of working with really great professionals. So I think the bar is really high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say that first quality of all, of course, it's talent. And I don't mean, I, I think that it's important for every photographer to build this body of work that shows his, his or hers potential. And that, by that, I mean, not only what you've done so far, but what can you achieve? And maybe that won't come through brands or agencies. Maybe that will need to be a personal work. Mm -hmm. Something that really speaks to you and that can really show your potential. Yeah. And that's very important because I think that when, when I look at a, at a photographer's website, I always look for his personal work, for his or her personal work, because mm -hmm. that way I know what true connection will she or he have had will, will she or he have with my project with, that, with mm -hmm. the result I want to achieve so mm -hmm. I think that talent is a first um, second I would say this initiative and passion because every creative is looking for someone who will just add that something that will make the work more interesting yeah and that can come from proposing a different composition to mm -hmm. making i don't know maybe something else totally different but that will that that uh, proposal will like wow us and yeah. we want that for our, our final result you know just yeah. how can you enhance the work and i think that a, a very important quality is also trust is also reliability it's mm -hmm. very important. We, we always love the projects we, we, we create so much. And one of the most important things is being able to trust uh, people we'll work with to make that come true. Mm -hmm. So from respecting the scheduled appointments of pre-production to sharing your thoughts, to making sure, planning ahead and yeah. making sure that everything will go smoothly Mm -hmm. um, as, as smooth as possible during the time of the shooting. Yeah. I think that's also very important. And when you look at a list of possibilities, um, someone you can trust will sure, will sure make it that name uh, stand out in so, the list of possible photographers to work yeah. with. Yeah. So it's like a mixture of passion, reliability, but also being fearless you know, feeling as if yeah. you are part of a team and that you are pushing forward for the same goal. Yes, being crazy creative, but as responsible as you can. You know? <laughs> we need to trust that things are going to happen. Yeah, okay, it's so like crazy, but not too crazy. Like, yeah, crazy, crazy but, but really time. reliable. <laughs> That's great. So, um, I, need to, we, I don't want to keep you for too long because I know you're still working as well. Um, and it's, a different time but so I have one last question uh, which is what way do you think um, the production paradise spotlight awards could benefit uh, photographers I think I... that the spotlight awards is an amazing opportunity especially now for photographers to have their work uh, seen by creatives all around you know mm -hmm. so it's it's a, an incredible opportunity to showcase your images and reach creatives from different countries. I think that we are facing some very unusual times mm -hmm. and suddenly it doesn't matter where you are in order to get the job done. We are really not thinking about the country's frontiers or something which we really need to worry about when producing work mm -hmm. because um, working remotely, uh, having that period of remote working, I think that really changed uh, people's views on how does it work that it can actually work doing campaigns from a distance mm -hmm. and that can be something good I think even those who are more resistant to it at first 
just realized that as we needed to keep things happening, we did. And I think that in the future, we'll just keep that knowledge that we can expand the range of, of, of work opportunities and work mm -hmm. with photographers from all, all around the world mm -hmm. because it can work. And so I think that photographers should really seize this opportunity to yeah. put their work out there for yeah. everyone to see. Exactly. So it's very important to have that online presence because now that we have been confined to our homes and we have more restrictions, it's amazing how we still have been able to connect through the use of technology and through the use of being online. Yes, I think that a lot of stuff changed and we, we adapted really quickly. And I think that we learned a lot by that. Yeah. Um, I could say like being more specific with, their, with the briefings you're sending and being more in touch during the pre-production but it actually worked. And mm -hmm. I think that everyone has like opened in their heads this opportunity, this little door to, so uh, distance shouldn't be an issue anymore. Yes. You know, yeah. we can really make it work from a distance. So if you want to, to work, if you love the, the images of a photographer that's far, far away, you can still work with him. You shouldn't yeah. be afraid. That was exactly. something a little enlightening about these times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's like, um, even though we've had these restrictions, it's even, it's opened more opportunities and more of the door and shows how quickly people are able to adapt and it hasn't stopped moving, it hasn't stopped work and it hasn't stopped the change that's going to be coming. So it is really exciting. It is a really exciting time. Yeah, um, yes, it is. Yeah. So um, lastly, um, what would be your final message for photographers, uh, especially beauty photographers who are going to have their work seen by you? Um, so what would be your final message to them? Um, I think it would be bring diversity, look forward, not back. Don't, don't, don't look at what has been done. Look at what you're willing to do for the future, what message we are sending through beauty and I embrace our personal projects. I think yeah. that's something that can be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. This has been like such a lovely conversation. So inspiring. Oh, I feel me too. <laughs> Thank you um, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And yeah, I look forward to seeing what work you choose for our uh, production, our uh, production paradise spotlight awards. And yeah, thank you so uh, much. I'm looking forward to see the work. Thank you so much yeah. for the invitation. Thank you for this time, letting me share my thoughts. Absolute pleasure. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye, take care. Bye.